Hello and welcome to the Drawing Room Experts. This is me, Zabe. As you can probably um, guess from my my voice, I'm extremely, extremely excited. Uh, first of all, to have the boys with me, Farouk and Sahir, how you guys are doing? We're doing well, pretty good. It's actually pretty cold here in Toronto, so I'm not I know you guys. You guys, <laughs> you guys started with the first uh, snow a couple of days ago, didn't you? We had our first snow yes day before yesterday. It was it was snowing from four a.m. in the morning to eleven thirty p.m. So yeah, my mother lives there too, and she she sends me pictures and videos, and I am already like <laughs> feeling cold just looking at those. Uh, Farooq, how's it going? It's good. I mean, it's not as cold as Canada here in California. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We're, but it's still cold for us. I mean, I have my we, coffee. We're out. still we're still using our summer jackets, so I mean, it's not as bad. Yeah. All right. So, guys, you know, we have uh, made a point of almost featuring um, cr people who play cricket on this podcast. Imagine <laughs> from our last episode with Mustafa Baloch when we uh, featured him as a local cricketer. Today's episode is also kind of similar because we're fe featuring an ex cricketer of sorts who's a fan. Um, but then he has also a side gig as a PCB CEO as well. So, Bit just of moonlighting. Small, yeah, just a little. <laughs> Just, just a little bit of on the side. So with us, we have none other um, CEO of PCB, Mr. Wasim Khan. Sir, how's it going? Yes, good, thanks. I'm a bit concerned with uh, you introducing me as a cricketer of sorts. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, I was just trying you, you, you to... Probably, you've probably looked at my record, right? That's why you're probably I, saying of sorts. Well, I mean, it's better <laughs> than our records for sure. <laughs> it's better than <laughs> our records for sure. I mean, yeah. it is... It is a step up from uh, from Mustafa Bolo just a little bit. I think the PCB gig kind of takes you above him uh, in, in that regard for sure. I know this is the um, you're probably kind of end of the day for you, isn't it? Over it's there? Uh, about seven seven p.m. on okay. uh, on, on Tuesday evening. So uh, how's uh, how's the day been so far for you? Yeah, it's, it's been, been good. Meetings? I mean, it's yeah, just a uh, work work from home. So we just kind of doing a fifty percent workforce uh -huh. in on alternate days and uh obviously because of the covid situation so uh yep so i work from home get quite a bit of stuff done uh when you're sort of working on your own at home so uh i've taken the liberty today of doing that that's that's great so uh in fact, i've I actually got my shorts on underneath this so by the way <laughs> well i mean that. you're not alone sir you're not alone well, you're not alone actually <laughs> <laughs> but shirt and tie i've been on a board meeting with a shirt and tie and then just for shorts on so <laughs> oh great oh great okay i mean probably probably the least formal dressing in uh, our board settings for sure and uh, i think you're not yeah. breaking any barriers there <laughs> um okay so uh again really really appreciate your time this is a huge thing for us to have this discussion with you as a fan i don't know if you've interacted with fans before this or not but this is this is uh something really huge for us and um we're going to be focusing on uh, some stuff that we feel like it's it's important for us as fans and not going to be dwelling into like the technicalities of cricket and you know how the borders run blah blah, blah. because i th i think we've heard most uh most of that conversation with other interviews that you've done so uh we're going to be focusing you know a lot of the stuff that we'll be discussing it's going to be us thinking as fans <coughs> to us and we've discussed that uh, amongst us so without any further ado i'll ask Faruk to really start us off and then we'll go from there Faruk. well th th thank you zeb um we the, the first one is a little little tough right off the bat um you know just just a quick background i work in mergers and acquisitions and i work with a lot of successful business business people um and, and you know someone once told me and it was a very successful businessman out of pakistan when i used to work back home and and and, and they said um you know part of all all big decisions in life are always emotional they're, they're never logical and what, where I'm going with this is, uh, you know, you've re received an enormous amount of media attention and, you know, you're viewed as an, you know, you've been viewed as an outsider and been attacked as an intruder, uh, you know, when you joined PCB. And, and, and it's kind of with any prominent position where, you know, the greatest interest of the people is concerned. It's, it's typically considered a thankless job in Pakistan, right? I mean, and, yeah. and so, so my question to you is, when you were moving to Pakistan, taking on this role, weren't you already expecting all of this that happened to you before coming to Pakistan? And, 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 and if not, what was your expectation, you know, um, picking up your suitcases mm -hmm. and landing in Lahore? 
And, you know, did you not foresee this happening? And, you know, aren't, and, and, and if you did not, I mean, aren't they rightful in kind of saying that you're kind of an outsider because you don't understand the culture? Um, I'm, I know it's a, it's a harsh one, but I really want to understand as a fan and also as an expat Pakistani, uh, you know, what your thoughts were, um, you know, when, when, you, when you, you were taking up this position. Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, really good question. I've got it. I've got it asked before. Um, I was I was appointed early December 2018 and I started my job on February the 6th, 2019. Right. It's probably fair to say that during those three months, whilst I was sort of watching from afar, two months, um, I kind of started to get a clear idea about the media spotlight and the media attention I was going to receive when I got over there. Mm -hmm. um, and I also started to understand the hostility uh, from a certain um, TV station um, who were clearly uh, making a beeline for me um, before I'd even started the job. So, look, I kind of got a real idea and a sense of that because what happens in life, as you probably know, is people don't send you the good videos, right? No. They send you the bad videos. So <laughs> people, people will send me a video and go, can't believe he's saying this about you, man. I can't believe he's saying that about Slagging you. Slagging you off. Slagging off yeah, right here. I'm, I'm saying, well, why have you sent it to me for then? What am I going to gain from watching this, right? <laughs> yeah, so I, th exactly. I, th I think it's that kind of sadistic nature of, of humans sometimes that they just want to um, send you stuff. But I kind of had a clear idea about what I was going to get. I think the things that shocked me, Farouk, a little bit has been the uh, sustained nature of it. Sort of mm. I'm 21 months into the job now. Um, I, I do genuinely believe that the, my worst times are behind me in terms of what I had to put up with for, for quite a long time. I think my family and friends probably got more upset than what I did. And um, if it's done anything, uh, you know, for me, it's helped me become a lot more resilient as a person. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's toughened me up um, to the you know to the point where you know if you were to send me something about people saying stuff, it just kind of like washes over now. I just don't allow myself to take it in. Um, you know, I don't really watch the TV stations here. Um, so I watch a lot of Netflix and I kind of, you know, do other things, but I don't I don't spend my time watching the TV stations because there are a lot of people who spout a lot of rubbish here. Um, it's based around sensationalism. It's based on um, drama. You know, it's based on all of those things. You know, there are some very, very good cricket journalists here, but there are also some very, very poor ones. So. Look, it's, mm -hmm. it's as I imagined, I think that um, gradually what's happened, which has helped me, is that the more I've delivered and the more that's got delivered, the more the fans have turned against these people. Um, and, and I think that that's been the real positive from all of this is just looking at, you know, reading comments and various other things. And I think by and large, I would say probably 95, 96 percent have been hugely supportive, particularly over the last six months. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 great to know. So, so kind of in hindsight, let's say, um, you know, if you were to make this decision again, with all mm -hmm. the knowledge and information that you have today, what would happen to you if you were to take up this role? Would you accept this position again? I, I, I'm not saying if you would renew your contract, but let's say if you were to make this decision again to come back and join as the chief executive of 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 the board, would you make that decision again? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hesitate. One minute, because oh, no. I, th cause I, cause, oh. I think that if you put it in perspective, um, you know, I stood there in 2009 when we won the T20 World Cup, standing there with my mates at Lords. 2017, I was just, you know, bought normal tickets, sitting there with five or six friends, okay, watching the final at the Oval against India. You know, if someone said to me then, sort of in a year and a, well, a year and five months' time, you're going to be interviewed for the role of chief executive of the Pakistan wow. Cricket Board. I probably would have pinched myself, you know, it, it, make, it makes you realize that, um, you know, that whilst there's a lot of downsides because of the scrutiny um, and the culture as well, which a lot of the time is difficult because, you know, glass is always half empty, I find here. Um, people always find issues and problems. Um, yeah. There's no there's no real sense, in my view, of, of any sort of, um, particularly in cricket, there's no real view of nationalism. You know, um, you know, the, some of these journos, two or three, four of them will, wouldn't hesitate to bring Pakistan cricket down by, you know, revealing something that about a player or anything else on an eve of a World Cup or an eve of a series. Whereas, yeah. you know, you look at India, you very rarely see that. 
you know, because people will think, well, actually, it's going to hinder our chances. So why would we do it? Um, so, so there's a number of uh, things, but, I, but for, from my point of view, I certainly I wouldn't change anything. It's been exhilarating. Uh, I think it's been uh, relentless. Um, and but it's also, you know, it's been scary at times. Um, but, you know, it's been a great ride so far. And, I'm, I'm you know, 21 months in, I'm absolutely loving it. Well, that, that's kind of amazing. And my, my, my next question kind of derives from, you know, um, your motivation and your, um, you know, journey so far. So um, kind of, you know, if I was to sum up Pakistan's dilemma, you know, as an as an audience or as a as a student of history, you know, briefly across the board, I, I think that would be the absence of structure. Right. I mean, if I look at things, if I look at institutions, be it our airlines or, um, yeah. you know, our, our cricket, our sports or the board, it's 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 the absence of structure. You ask anyone and, and, and they'll they'll talk about one hit wonders across the board, you know, um, around various um, aspects of life. Um, my, my question to you is, um, you know, What's kind of your plan? What's kind of your succession plan to leave behind when you're done with this role? You, you, it, it sounds like you definitely don't want to be part of that briefcase elite that you know flies in, takes up a corporate position, or you know a public position, um, stays there for a few years and then they're gone and nobody knows what they're doing, right? It, it definitely sounds like you're not one of those people, right? You you want to make a mark. So what is it that you're doing to sustain the bigger decisions that you're making, especially, you know, the changes at the domestic level or the domestic structure? Um, what do you have to say about that? Well, look, I think firstly, um, you know, I, I'd heard a lot of things about the so-called PCB mafia before I arrived. <laughs> you know, people saying there'll, there'll be people within the PCB that won't let you work. They're going to hound you. They're going to make your life difficult because, you know, they don't like change and, you know, they don't want yeah. somebody from the outside coming in. So, you know, I realized very quickly within sort of six months, having assessed the situation, that there were two or three people that had to go, um, you know, and I kind of got the backing of the chairman and, you know, managed to to root them out because I knew that, A, they were, they were probably toxic individuals. Secondly, there were also individuals that um, didn't want change and, would look look for 10 reasons why something wouldn't work rather than 10 reasons why some I thought if we really want to change this place um, you get to the root cause of one or two individuals if you dismantle them then it provides you with an opportunity with others will then clear the way because they'll know that if you get to that person mm -hmm. he goes then there's a chance to do something um, one of the things we did was Farouk was put a five-year strategic plan together um, you'll be probably surprised or unsurprised to know that the PCB had never had a strategic plan before. Um, you know, there was no real direction of where people were going. It's very hand-to-mouth existence in terms of daily operations, how people operated. You know, oh, a crisis has come up. Okay, let's deal with it. No real forward planning. So um, we put a five-year plan together um, and we, we're monitoring each of those six key pillars that we set out within the strategic plan that is all built towards creating sustainable success. I've managed to bring some people in that I wanted to have within the organization that mm -hmm. I can help drive that change so I could bring my own people in. So, you know, we brought in, you know, some of the ex players who I felt would bring significant value. So, Yunus Khan as a batting coach, you know, a guy I get on with really well, despite what the media say, we've got a fantastic relationship. Uh, Muhammad Yusuf, who's been doing a phenomenal job already in a high performance center. Sakhalen Mushtaq, who spent three years with England, he's coming as our head of international player development. You know, there's, there's a number of ex-players. I found there was a huge disconnect when I arrived between the PCB and ex-players. A lot of uh, lack of trust. Um, people didn't, felt the PCB didn't care about them. So what I tried to do was try and bring a lot of these guys back and say, look, you, you can add real value to our next youngsters coming through. We need your support. Come and be part of what we're trying to do rather than sitting on the sidelines because uh, you all care about Pakistan cricket. So, you know, I tried to take a different way in terms of doing it, but uh, a high performance center now, which, you know, we've put together a, a, a delivery framework, which is about how we're going to coach kids and young, young players. We're retraining all of our coaches because quite sh frankly, our coaching system was a shambles. Um, you know, so we're re-coaching and retraining all of our coaches. 
uh, where there's a certain way we want to play our brand of cricket, uh, bring mm-hmm. a lot of the youngsters through, like your Heather Ali's, your Hasnains, your Nassim Shah's, these sorts of guys. Yeah. You know, I, gen- I genuinely believe that, you know, sustained success is going to be there for us because we've got the system right and we've changed the system. The challenge I find in Pakistan is um, there's lack of patience. I yeah. think it's just a trait of Pakistani people that we don't have any patience, right? We expect results tomorrow uh, or a month's time. I keep saying you're not going to change a culture that's been there for 40 years and has been embedded for 40 years. You know, you've got to see the bigger picture about where we're trying to go, see what we're trying to do, buy into where we're trying to go. And I think all of those things in time, Farouk, you know, I always say to people, do a comparative study of the three years before, you know, this regime came in two years ago. See what we've delivered over the last two years compared to what was delivered in the previous three years. And I think people there themselves will be able to see return of test cricket, the whole of the PSL being delivered in Pakistan, five year strategy, MCC coming to tour, we've got teams coming, England are coming next year, we've got South Africa coming in January. You know, this is all built on trust and confidence, right? You know, people don't buy into systems, you buy into people. So, you know, we've had to do a lot of work trying to um, build confidence and trust myself and the chairman, use our contacts, use our credibility to do that. And, you know, hopefully that's only going to benefit Pakistan cricket. Yeah, all all that you say, you know, that 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 requires work, we'll see, but we don't we don't want to do that. We just want to yeah. know when when everything feels fixed and also just going back to your hiring of ex cricketers. I thought you were hiring them so that you they don't have YouTube channels. Um they they have it. none of them have invited me on there actually. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad. Thing. But uh but look, well, I think, you should I think have it's... something in their contract to ha- make sure that they don't have YouTube channels when they leave the, cha- the job. The, cha- the, cha- the, cha- the challenge the challenge you have Zabe is that um and I can see when you listen to some of the uh experiences that people had with the PCB signing four year contracts, five year contracts and getting sacked after six months. Mm-hmm. You know, pe- people have invested a lot of time and money in setting up YouTube channels. They don't know with a change of regime or a change of the prime minister mm-hmm. who comes in, what's going to happen next. You know, so actually for, at a human level, I don't blame them. You know, there's, yeah. there's a do- do's and don'ts about what they can speak. They have to go through our director of comms, who, by the way, was at the ICC for 13 years, Sami Burney. Um, you know, in terms of what they're going to talk about. So in contracts, they've got written about what they can and can't do. But I genuinely... You know, we don't, we're not living in a Western society where everything nicely, you know, you forgo yeah. that, you don't do that. I genuinely, you listen to these guys' stories and you just think, wow. You, no, know, yeah, you, don't, you, you, don't, you don't blame them. You don't, genuinely <laughs> don't blame them because they don't know what's around the corner for themselves. Yeah, <laughs> interesting thing in Pakistan, you know, with, with all their YouTube channels and social media presence, yeah. I, I mean, the, the absence of, of, of the lack or, or the lack of the IT policy, they don't even know if they're going to be able to operate their YouTube channels in the next, you know, six yeah. months because the, yeah. the way things unroll in Pakistan. So I, 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 I agree with you. I, I don't blame them. But, but, but Wasim, just to really small follow-up question i appreciate all the efforts that you've mentioned and we've been following those closely you know as your as as, as fans of the of the game um is is there a board or a structure that's protecting the changes that we're making making sure that this does not happen again a new prime minister comes in and you know they're the patron in chief and they handpick the person they want to bring in as you know the chairman of the pcb or the chief executive and you know they start making and Things are back to where they were before. Especially the guys um, that you remove, the toxic ones. We don't want them back in. Well, that's, yeah. that's always that's always that's always a concern, right? Because so, you know what what happens is when people lose jobs, ministers start ringing. You get all kinds of people doing yeah. safari trying to get them back into their jobs again. You know, and um, so there's a couple of things that happen. One is that when we re- we went from 16 teams to six in domestic cricket. Um, the constitution of the PCB changed in August 2019. So that's set in stone. One of the key things of that is that um, you can now have independent board members. So we have actually got four excellent new board members. We've got one guy called Javed Qureshi from Karachi, whose father was, uh, what was his name, Awes Qureshi, or I can't remember exactly, but he was a well-known journalist who was involved in cricket for a long time. He worked in Citibank for 35 years in Singapore, has now come back. Ex-player, nice. captain, the Pakistan under-19s tour to India in back in 79 with Ramiz and all of these guys in the team. 
you know, still very much about 60 years old. So you know, that's the type of caliber of people we've got back now. And I think, look, in terms of security, um, bringing old people in or new people in or whatever, um, what that board will do is they will elect their own chairman. OK, so what happens is previously the, the prime minister selects the chairman and he has one other person that he can bring on board. And mm -hmm. so, you know, he brings the chairman and one of the board member. Now what will happen moving forward is the, the patron will remain there, but the patron can nominate up to two people as part of what he does, but they cannot nominate the chairman. The chair is elected from the group itself. And now we've got some very high level professional people in there and got rid of some of the people who are involved in departments and various others. Um, you know, it's going to change the dynamics of all of that. So there should be more stability. So it's not going to be up to the prime minister about, you know, who he, a new prime minister comes in, he selects a chairman. It won't work like that anymore. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> so here, here's where I'm going to intervene with you right now here. Right? It's, 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 it, I, I've heard some words uh, from you over the last what about few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I Don't worry about that. <laughs> Um, there are certain words that I heard from you, right? It's the high performance center that you guys have, and then you're talking about changes being made and, you know, domestic cricket structure being changed from 16 teams to 16, stuff like that, right? I'm going to go back 16, 17 years from today. Yeah. When I was in school, so I had the privilege of going to a school which the cricket was one of the best in that, in that school, which was St. Patrick's School in Karachi, right? Yeah. We have very prominent cricketers coming out of, uh, you just mentioned Basim Bari. Basim Bari came from St. Patrick's. And then Danish Canada came from St. Patrick's, right? Hassan Reza came from St. Patrick's, right? What I'm asking you here is, right, when I was playing for the St. Patrick's cricket team, once yeah. the, when I was done with school, when I was done with A-levels, I didn't know what, if I want to be a cricketer, I didn't know what my path was after that, right? From school level, the only thing I remember was, you know, giving, there was a, there was a, there was an advertisement advertisement in a newspaper that Karachi is running trials for under 15, under 17, things like that, right? And I'm pretty sure if, if you talk about Karachi, you're talking about almost like a 50 million population back 16 years ago. And out of that, every kid, I, the question is, what has PCB done in regards to from the school structure, boys coming into playing in those high performance things? And we um, don't want to lose more <laughs> talents like him, by the way. You don't know what you're missing out on here. This no, no, I heard guy. about him. No, no, I heard about him when I arrived. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember whether they said legend or legend. I can't remember exactly what it was. But it was actually, actually, both of those. Probably uh, sorry. Wrong, <laughs> but look, um, one of the things I said, I'll, I'll tell you, and it's a similar system all over the world, right? Is that if you've got a teacher who's interested in cricket, right? Your school will play cricket, right? There was, no. There's never been a school system in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. It's been a case of if you've been lucky enough for local schools to set up a little league and play, then fantastic. So there's never been an infrastructure of schools cricket within Pakistan. Through the six cricket associations, what they are going to run is under 13s, under 16s and under 19s. OK, coaches are going to be aligned to them and coaches are going to be going into clubs and going into schools to coach. This is going to be the job that each of the cricket associations will have where there's a framework that will be providing them for club and school cricket which each of them consistently will be delivering within their local areas. What's happened at the PCB, which has been ridiculous, um, the Pakistan Cricket Board is the only cricket board where everything is centralised. I've mm. never come across that before. You know, we used to deliver a little bit in school, a little bit in clubs, oversaw the ground developments across 11 stadiums. Ridiculous. You know, yeah. and so what we're doing is we're devolving. Um, you know, they, we're devolving, we're decentralising through the six cricket associations. They are being they set up being registered as societies um, and they will be running themselves as companies and organizations and they'll be audited and all that with their own boards. That's that's where we're moving to. So the chance element is actually going to move away more than when you were perhaps playing in the fact that there is going to be a structure for kids to come into the under 13s. You know, we've got five zonal areas for girls cricket now, which we never had before. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a, We've got a different structure for girls now. We brought David Hempin from Australia, who was part of the Women's Big Bash for four years, played first class career, and has a head coach. So there's a number of changes we've made. But, um, you know, when you say what have the PCB done or what are they doing for schools cricket is that, again, nothing was ever done previously. But what we are trying to do is put that system in place now, which may take two or three years. I said three right. years when I from last year, I said three years before we really start to see this motoring. 
and it will take that amount of time. Right. Um, but I'm confident that we'll we'll get there with it. Yeah, I mean, what I look at when I so when I when I live in US, right? What what I see the structure from? I'm I'm just going to compare. It's not a direct comparison, but it's a, 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 the the structure from NFL or or basketball or baseball, right? They they have high school high school games, and then they are drafted from the high school. They have scholarships in the colleges, and then from colleges they go into into you know they they get drafted into the international teams or or the or the or the state teams, whatever they are called, right? So that's what I was wondering if, if you are kind of going with a similar structure of they're going to be school cricket, college cricket, and then going on, or it's just going to be school cricket from the school. You're going to pick it up into the districts or the area zone that you're talking about. And then from that point onwards, they're going to go, but meaning yeah. like the school body is going to be very independent from the district body, or are they going to be co-aligning with each other? Look, th- th- there's never, never been that system. To do that will take me another 20 years to do, <laughs> you know, and I think that uh, I mentioned at the beginning about a Western you know, sort of structures, the US, Australia, England, South Africa, New Zealand, you know, we're, we're never going to get there because A, um, you don't have the straight thinking in the people to help run a system like that. I you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we probably need about That's 300 no. of you. That's a no side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, trying to be politically correct. But, uh, um, yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's park that one for now. That's what I'll say politically. <laughs> but um, Sorry, but no, look, I, I, I think that all of that, um, under the six cricket associations, there's 90 cities, right? So we've also set up something called the City Cricket Associations. So we, we, we are um, breaking it down even further. So in, in Central Punjab, for example, I think there's 13 cities that come under Central Punjab, you know, and so they'll be running their own schools programs. Uh, there's going to be an intercity competition going on between the cities with a fight with the finalists as well. So we're trying to break it down as much as possible to say, well, you know, we don't have 70 million people like you do in England. You've got 220 million people with yeah. no system. That's what you're starting from. So therefore, what's the most effective way just to get kids playing, get them up and running and get them through the system. So the talent ID will be really important as well to make sure that, you know, the better ones without Safarshi based on merit are getting opportunities to progress into the under 13s. That's when you should have joined this company or joined PCB 16 years ago and find me as a talent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was that it was that it was that um, that that, that uh, front foot drive, which I think is still is still remembered here. I think in Karachi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Zahira yeah, Bas esque. Zahira Bas esque. Yeah. But although you, you fun fact for him, he actually um, kept Danish Canaria out of the eleven. That's that's how wow. prominent he was. Yeah, that's true. So it, it, it is. So so Danish Canaria was not in the playing eleven when I was the captain in St. 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 Patrick's. Really? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a good job you're. Same direction, but it's, you know, <laughs> we had we had keep another. That quiet. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you, I know what you did there, Rasim. I know what you. <laughs> well, uh, that's that's, that's, that's a good one. A lot of people career goals <laughs> fair the other way, but anyhow. Um, but um, so, need, Rasim, follow follow up question on on Sire's question. Um, what are we doing to groom our players? Because some of the recent scandals relating to social media that we've you know, come across recently. Um, I, I, I'm not going to name anyone, but it's cringy stuff, to be honest. I mean, it, yeah. it 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 just gives me twist in my you know belly when I listen to this stuff, and I and it's unfortunate with that kind of exposure. They're not taught how to deal with that um, exposure and how to present themselves. And 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 some of the players that that you know that have been involved in this kind of stuff, you know, you were hoping. At least they wouldn't be the ones um, to 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 come up with with, with this kind of stuff. Because, and without naming anyone, because there's a few players that have some cricketing background. There's prominent people in their families. Um, you know, that I mean, are big cricket. Just name I them mean, already, I guess. Well, yeah. yeah. But, but, but look, but, but but look for, for for a guy, I know so, I got yeah. the gist. Of, I got the gist of your question. I think. Look, yeah. um, the, the the challenge that you always have is that. Um, you know, and, and it's not a it's not having a go at our players, but, you know, we're, we're a volatile society. A lot of players are not educated. Mm-hmm. OK, so basic education when they and the PCB is to blame because the PCB has never invested in the self-development or personal development for these players. You know, but there's never been any mentoring. There's never been any life coaching. There's never been any basics around teaching these guys English. All of the things that we are addressing now. 
um, getting a psychologist in, getting all of these things so they can actually, we can start to groom and develop your Heather Ali's, your Nassim Shah's, your Barber's. So, you know, there's quite a bit of work that's be, that's been going to be starting in terms of what we're going to be doing with Barber when he gets back from New Zealand as well, to help him develop as a human being, as a person, nice. to get him thinking in a slightly different way. So, you know, th this is a failure of the system, simple yeah. failure of the system. You know, what you see with these guys is the naivety, the lack of understanding, um, it's no excuse, but, you know, sadly, this is the background from villages and various things they've come from. They suddenly hit the bright light. Suddenly they've discovered women. They've got money in their pockets, you know, and they just can't they can't control themselves because they right. just can't believe they've got all of this. Yeah. Um, and so they don't think about the repercussions, um, you know, and I think this is their areas that we are trying to talk to them about their choices that they make in life. What would ha what happens, you know? give them examples of other careers that have gone down the drain because people have made wrong choices. So there's a number of things on that level that we are educating these guys on. But again, we're starting from scratch, but you know, there's a lot of work that we need to put into these guys. Yeah, and, and I think it's, it's important you mentioned working closely with Baba because those are some, like that's that's a fantastic player we have in hand, but also some really dangerous genes. So yeah. we've got to be very, very careful <laughs> yeah. how how we how that really progresses because yeah. that could go... denim den denims, I think. <laughs> den denim rings. Yeah, the denim ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we need to get him off the we need to get him off the Wranglers. And yeah, we need yeah. to move on to the Calvin Kleins. That's what exactly. we need to do. He That's right. Yeah. See, I was gonna say you're gonna go with the Hugo bosses, right? Or Versace's. <laughs> let's let's take one step at a time. One step at a time. Yeah. <laughs> So, 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 I mean, COVID, for we all know, right, has been yeah. a nuance for a lot of people, but at the same time, it could be a blessing in dis disguise as well, right? I mean, we had a, we had a good amount of break during this COVID uh, era, if I want to call it out that way, right? Did we did, did PCB took this as an advantage of using, hey, everyone's on a break, let's sit together and see, let's start this this grooming sessions or. You know those kind of you know uh, changing the mindset. Oh, no, not just the mindset, like you said, you hired a, a psychologist here, right? So was this time utilized mm. for the for the players when they were not on the field or off the field at the back end? Yeah, look, we did a lot of online sessions with the players. I I, I was keeping in weekly touch with the players, so you know speaking to as many of our centrally contracted guys, just even a little voice voice note on WhatsApp sending it to them, they'd get responses back saying anything you need, guys, you know where we are, blah, blah, blah. It's all about, you know, some of the things which are foreign over here, which is called engagement with mm -hmm. people, building trust, building their confidence, letting them know that we're here and we care about them and, and those things. So we're doing all that, but we had online sessions actually. And what we did was we we selected different players to, to look at different topics. So we had the likes of, you know, Yunus Khan, Muhammad Yusuf, Mushtaq Ahmed, uh, even Shweb Akhtar, Rashid Latif, Moin Khan, Wasim Akram, Javed Miandad, all of these guys, we got involved on online sessions. So, you know, some would talk about, you know, game awareness. Others would talk about playing in English conditions. You know, or all the of the things that before, yeah, or before, you know, just came before England. <laughs> you know, so all of these things were in place. Uh, to be honest, the, the guys uh, responded really, really well to it. Um, you know, I remember the Prime Minister saying to me when we went for a meeting about two months ago, he said, it's the, the, the best I've seen Pakistani batters play a moving ball. Mm -hmm. He said, from what from the time I can remember. Wow. Because the pra That's practitioners crazy. like like Broad and Anderson were probably were not around when, um, the, the, you know, the Prime Minister was around playing in England. I mean, these guys are, are proper, proper, you know, professionals. They're good at what they do. They know English conditions and it's tough. Yeah. But, you know, our boys, you know, having not played for five months, England coming off as test series against the West Indies, I thought they gave a good account of themselves. And, you know, we should have won that first test. And I think oh, we're yeah. always going to, always oh, going to yes. root that, always oh, going to root that opportunity. That's one of our that episodes. But then I have expressed my oh. um, utter lack of surprise pain of and pain as well. Because when that happened, I know that we've, we've like gone through as a group, as fans, gone through so many uh, surprise defeats, if you like that it almost, that you become numb to it uh, at a point, but that was still hard to take. That was still hard to take. On a lighter note, sorry, I, I, I've been holding back. On or two lighter notes. You, you, said, <laughs> you said you had like, some voice notes exchange with the players. I hope nothing was misfired in your direction. <laughs> no, they're, they're all very good. I think all courteous, <laughs> all respectful. Um, 
and um, yeah, just actually, you know, responded directly back from what I was asking them, which is which is quite good. So they were actually listening to my messages, which is good. That's, that's good. good. That's good. Is someone think, someone taking yeah, horse so, riding lessons? Oh no, never mind. Uh, <laughs> um, so so you are an avid watcher of Netflix. I am also an avid watcher of Netflix and Amazon Prime or any other platform that you were going to talk about, right? Do you not get out? Do you not get out much or what? What's going yeah, on? Is it the snow? I mean, it's, it's is it the snow? snow? It's, it's we're, definitely we're, the snow. <laughs> It's definitely just no. <laughs> like, we're the only two guys he knows. A lot of them uh, are, you know, ladies, and now he's married with a kid, so he, of course, I have, you know, I have a 10 that, month old right behind me. He might, he, might start, uh, he might start talking about cricket more than I do. He, he knows how to reverse swing right now with, a, with a, the ping pong ball. But anyhow, um, so, like, you know, avid watchers of all platforms, right? And I don't know if you've had a chance to watch. There's a documentary in Amazon called The Test. Right. Yeah. It's it's in Australian, you know, it's Australian ground. Everything is doing it. Yeah, what's going happening it. behind the scenes, yep. right? The yep. other thing that I uh, the, 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 on Netflix that is the Mumbai Indians, you know, going on in part, right? Here's the thing, right? What We're is, doing it, is, by the way. We're doing oh, it. Oh, there you go. Then he just answered the oh, question, right? that's amazing. We've oh, spoken, really? we sp we, we spoken to a guy who does a lot of the productions for Netflix who actually approached me about oh, nice. two months two months ago so but what they want to try and do is time it for the time when england tour in 2022 Ooh, so it's yeah. not going to be anytime soon so but they want to build up to that That's so amazing. um that so yeah fantastic. so it's i think in terms of pla profile platform for us i think as a nation and as a team and everything else we want to do I think it's going to be tremendous for us. Is it, is it, is it already signed or is it in the works right now? Um, it's, in the, it's in the works. It's been sold into Netflix and the response back from the guy who does the production, who's been involved in a lot of the football ones and various other stuff, was that they're all over it. Oh, yeah. but, but, they, but they want to time it for when England, um, for when England come over in 2022, because I think that they feel that will be quite symbolic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are, there, so. are, there, are there job openings right now? I'm still, are you hiring? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Do you, have you ever seen? There's a program called Faulty Towers. I don't know whether you've ever seen that. And there's one guy who does about se he does about seven different roles. I think we can hire you in every every position as a coach in Karachi. We can get you on get you a role, a leading role in Netflix. I think. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, you have hired to give. I mean, you, he, the person had been uh, wearing a lot of caps on his head, right? So you had you had a head coach, you had a selector, we've, and, and God somebody. knows he needs a cap. We've got it. We've got it. We've got a yeah. We've got a tradition of that. So yeah, hey, jump on board. How many do you want? <laughs> yeah. It all depends how many can you give me, right? It's all about delegation here. <laughs> there you go. See Safarshi already. There you go. Already. Wait, it's if the Safarshi is coming from the, from, the, from the CEA of PCBA, it means something. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah. okay, so the, good to hear, right? It's because the test, yeah. watching the test as a documentary, and I was just thinking, right, what will our place reaction be, you know, being at the, at the large, right? Or being at the Oval or being at the MCG or even at the National Stadium Karachi? Right? Or even, you know, the Hor Gaddafi Stadium. How would their reaction be if they are playing test cricket and behind the scene, what's going on? Are people throwing in bats to at, at each other? Or what's the what's the whole situation? So I had one, one, one of my other roles is, is to be a, a clairvoyant, uh, to kind of <laughs> project myself into the future. <laughs> and actually say, when Barbara Azam walks in, in two years' time, is he going to throw his bat to the left or is he going to throw his bat to the right? <laughs> he is going to throw the bat. But we, who knows? We know. <laughs> who knows? I mean, this is going to be a new thing for the guys. I don't know what goes on in the dressing room, so we'll find out. And that's the beauty of it. We don't know how they're going to respond and how they're going to be. So exactly, um, I, I just watched. Uh, yeah. I just watched the one with the uh, uh, Spurs documentary. Um, yes, great. You've seen, you've seen that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, excellent. I I became a huge fan of the. Yes. the yeah, I haven't seen the Man City one before that, yeah. but the Spurs one. Although I'm not the fan of the club, but I'm a fan of Mourinho. It was just amazing to see. I mean, some of the footages that were were part of the show, I was surprised yeah. it got on because it was so yeah. blunt and yeah. it was so behind the scenes. That's the kind of stuff that as fans, we want to see like what really goes on behind the scenes, even if it's like, you know, arguments and fights and difficult conversations that it'll be something symbolic and remarkable if we are able to pull that off, something like that off. Yeah. So um, Wasim, um, uh, have we moved forward uh, or how far are we to get a new chief selector? Uh, we should be able to appoint one in about a week's time. Oh, um, so, so assuming yeah. all the interviews are yeah. done and everything so else. Just, 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 just to give you a bit of background as well, because actually I did a, I did a Zoom call with a, a lot of um, expats, in, ironically, in the US, physicians oh. and doctors. So there's a guy called Omer Saeed, his name is. 
um, who was very active in writing to me quite a lot and very knowledgeable guy. And, um, and in the end, I just I emailed him. I said, look, uh, you clearly know your stuff. I said, look, I'm very happy to do a, a Zoom if you want to get your mates together. So you got about 30 people on this call. Um, wow. and I've, and I've done, and, and literally, you know, all people lived in Karachi and Lahore and various people now living and working over there. And it was a really, really good session and did one with Australia diaspora about five days ago, exactly nice. the same. So I've tried to make sure that as, as far reaching as we could get to, because people have got a million and one questions, right? So the oh, question yeah. is always this about Misbah, you know, why was he given uh -huh. two roles? So what I, that's what I was trying to get to with this now, right? So just, just give you, give you a, a flavor of this. So. The PM was very, very keen that we had a Pakistani coach after Mickey Arthur. Right. Uh, the issue we had was options, genuinely mm. options. Can you believe in a country like Pakistan, we couldn't find a chief selector? Couldn't find I a mean, chief selector. I'm sure you would have found if you just no. picked anybody. No. Nobody was someone, available? You need, you need someone who doesn't have a screw loose for a start <laughs> as an ex-player. Yeah. And you need <laughs> someone who doesn't come in with an agenda. When you start to delve there's deeper, nobody left. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's nobody there, right? So absolutely yeah. nobody. So I spoke to Rashid Latif. He was interested for a while and then removed himself. See, the other thing you find in Pakistan is everybody talks a good game from the outside. And when, oh, yeah. you, um, when you start to, um, when you start to kind of say to them, come into the camp, come into a formal position. Oh, no, 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 no. Because they don't want the media scrutiny. They yeah, don't want to be yeah. bashed in the media. Yeah. So, you know, that's the part of the culture that we face. Yeah, everybody has got, a pro has got a problem, but nobody's ever got a solution. So I kept saying to people, okay, if it wasn't Miss Bar, give me your top three coaches from within Pakistan. Right. Yeah. Silence from the media. So I said, okay, Tom, give me a chief selector. Who would you have? Silence. Genuinely silence. So wow. now we've got a year on. We've managed to bring Yunus in and convince him to come in, which is great. So that's now and longer with Misbah. Chief selector role, we've actually got an option now, which we didn't have a year ago. So now we've got an option to pull it away. But, you know, when I tell people, uh, pe people think we just voluntarily just did this because, you know, hey, ho, we selected. But genuinely, I was pulling my hair out at night thinking, how can we be in a country like Pakistan? And yeah. we just don't have, I don't have three or four options in front of me as a head coach or a chief selector. Right. And as a football fan, I mean, uh, it's funny that you brought it up as a football fan. I wasn't too um, I, that wasn't that was my issue at all. I think I think mm. when you when you when Misbah was doing those three jobs, especially the chief selector one, yeah. I always thought that it's something OK. I was actually OK with that because in f football, as you know, the manager yeah. is the coach. He's also um, the chief selector, if you like. Yeah, and he does all of that strategy and planning and everything else. So it's not something that has never been done before, and uh, it's not like Misba is going to be running around the country himself by uh, and finding players and scouting them. No, he should have a team around to help him. Yeah, to basically give him a report around players. So it wasn't it wasn't something out of the blue. I actually appreciated the the whole idea behind it. So I don't know why people were kind of losing their head about oh, how is yeah. he going to do two big jobs? But, dude, he's not going to do it himself. Of course, he's going to have yeah. scouts and team around to help him yeah. do that. Well, yeah, six, head, on... six, six head coaches, right? And the part of exactly. the idea was they would do a lot of the work for him, and they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. They would come, you know. So who's 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 the new guy or gal? I'm not going to uh, We can't, specify. Can't really, say, can't really say at the moment. So. Can you give us any hints? Is he an uh, ex-player? He, like... he, used to, he used to play uh, um, school cricket in Karachi. Uh, got an amazing, amazing forward drive. His defense oh. is even better. Oh, uh, that's where you've been uh, out. That's why, why, why you've been out. We, we've, give, we've given a role. We've given him a leading role in Netflix. He's going to be oh. delivering uh. schools cricket. And you oh, know, we still, is, you know, we got can't tell you anymore. I can't tell you anymore. <laughs> why do you think that. he agreed to join us in this call today? <laughs> 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 we already had some behind the scenes going on already. Oh great! Oh great! Oh great! Yeah, this this thing is going down. There. <laughs> um, <laughs> So um, I know we're uh, closing our time and I want to get as many questions. Uh, just one thing that I wanted to discuss with you, I think the, the guys who also want, would really appreciate that is what are we doing around merchandising and branding ourselves? Yeah. Because one thing that you see uh, with other cricket boards that they have like is fan shops and stores. Yeah. I struggle so much to buy merchandise of like, hey, let me like, I don't know where to get my 96 jersey or 92 jersey 
Yeah. Or any World Cup jersey. Or uh, just interesting, my favorite one, the recent past, has been, I think, the one jersey that the team wore when uh, we had the World 11 visiting 2015 yeah. or 16, something yeah. like that. 15, that is one of my... 15. Yeah, exactly. So stuff like that. We fans want to pay for it. Uh, we don't want to go to, you know, Zeta Market, yeah. uh, as a lot of the people in Karachi would recognize what I mean. But we don't want to go and buy, you know cheap material just to make ourselves look good or feel good. Even with this World Cup, I think it wasn't really advertised, but um, you had like uh, some sports company in the UK that was that was working yeah. with jerseys. Well, just, just, on, just on World Cups, um, it, it, the rights of the World Cup don't belong to us in terms of Right, so okay. the ICC sell them. Yeah, nothing. So anything that you buy will just be fake on the marketplace or whatever. So we we don't. No, none of the countries have a, have the rights for the clothing oh, wow. during. It's all the ICC stuff. Um, we we have actually now. Firstly, we, we're setting up a store at the okay. Gaddafi Stadium. Uh, okay. we, we've got we own all the shops around the Gaddafi. We're going to knock down two shops and build a, a, a PCB superstore there. That's the first nice. thing. Secondly, we're actually building a, an OTT. Uh, platform as well, which is going to allow people to watch Pakistan games in different parts of the world. So, I mean, in the States, you've got Willow, right? So you kind yeah. of get you get cricket, but other places like Scandinavia, other places. Uh, we're also looking at ticketing and we're also looking at merchandising as part of that digital strategy that we're now putting together. Um, so hopefully within the next six months, <coughs> we'll be up and running with all that stuff. So we'll have a static shop and then we're also going to have the online stuff as well. So Oh, Again, no, no idea why it's never been done before. You know, basic commercial yeah. now, but ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And, well, then, and, and then, and just curious, who does our designing on our kits? Uh, I think it's it's uh, Malik and also CA as well in Pakistan. We gotta get some better ones. I know. Uh, I mean, just as fans, we just want to see yeah. some really good jerseys, like a Nike or an Adidas or somebody. I know or like that, that would be that would be amazing. I know that's probably. Because it's a, uh, I mean, we always compare ourselves to like India. India has like a Nike jersey, and I think they've worked yeah. with Adidas as well. But it makes sense for them. It's a huge market, blah blah blah, and they have like factories over there, Adidas and Nike yeah. factories that yeah. actually put, make exactly. Them. Yeah. So um, even even if it's not that, uh, any any brand that is kind of international that actually knows how to make jerseys yeah. for sports teams. I would uh, like we're happy. Yeah, because yeah. because right now it looks like the factories are designed the factories that make yeah. th th that make the sports goods or jerseys. It's just, just not their job. Just doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I I have another question, um, Azim, and you know it, it looks like every question that we have for you, it looks like you've been you guys have been working on things that have never been you know worked on before in the past. So uh, this is PSL related. Um, yeah. And, and and my question here is right now. I mean, we obviously appreciate all the all all the, all the brand owners who've come in and put in their money to buy all these franchises. My 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 question is, what's kind of your plan to generate value for the franchise owners, and what's what's kind of their ultimate exit option? And obviously, I'm sitting here in the Silicon Valley. You know, we look at these startups and we see. Um, you know, pre-seed and seed fundings, um, and then you know, people having exit options through VCs or private equities, and then you know, ultimately a strategic buyer would buy them out, and you know, they'll ultimately have an IPO, mm. right? Yeah. Um, right now, it looks like most of the franchise owners are more like on an ego trip. While we do appreciate they've put in money at a time where no one's really willing to invest money in Pakistan, and you know, they've done a great job of at least you know putting the money in and Farouk taking likes, that risk. Farouk's like for for Farouk likes giving statements for his questions, doesn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he goes <laughs> Come on, on and Farouk, on. get to it, mate. Come on. <laughs> yeah, so, time's running out. The question doesn't end with a question mark. Right, question your question your question then. is about exit strategies. For yes. Where are we going to build value? Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, so let me let me just tell you on that. Okay. So one one of the things is we're just looking at we're looking at a perpetuity model at the moment for the franchise yeah. owners because that's what they're looking for to give them long long term um, assurances so they can invest more money into what they're trying to do. If okay. they want to sell shares within their franchises, they can do that. Okay. We're looking at uh, the dollar parity for them at the moment. We're looking at the whole dollar rupee ish situation because two of them are actually registered overseas, Islamabad United and um, Karachi Kings. So they, they take quite a big hit. So when they bought uh, the PSL franchise, they paid 105 rupees to the dollar. Now it's about 170. So yeah. the franchise fees becomes a bit of an issue for these guys. Uh, what we're doing is we've got something called a central pool revenue model, which is gate receipts, sponsorship and broadcasting money. 
what we're doing is we can provide greater percentages of that. We have a percentage breakdown between what they receive and us as a PCB. So it's like 40, 60, 70, 30. What we're right. doing is we're top loading it to 90, 10 in their favor. So they can actually receive a lot more money so they can start generating. Three are actually breaking even at the moment. Three are losing money. So our whole purpose from PSL 7 will be, we'll get through six, PSL 7 will be to have the model in place for the perpetuity, which will probably be something up to 50 years. Um, and then on top of that, have a revised uh, working or business model that allows them to make money on an annual basis. So we've crunched all the numbers, we've looked at all of that. You know, all of them have invested for five years now in Pakistan cricket. None of them wants to walk away because it is an ego trip. Um, but mm -hmm. secondly, they've put a lot of money into it. So therefore, now is not the time to be walking away now that we've got the whole of the PSL back in Pakistan. Just a shame that, you know, we couldn't have crowds in for the final four matches. But, you know, hopefully from PSL 7, when we're fully integrated fans, they can start to see more of the great receipts coming back. But, you know, this work's taking place for Rook at the moment. And, and hopefully, um, you know, it's well, I know it's something that the, the franchises are welcoming at the moment. I mean, kudos to you to finishing off the, off the tournament, right? I mean, this is something. Yeah. We wanted that was really good. to be over, right? This is a fantastic and, job. For you, you know, and God knows how much I appreciate you for broadcasting uh, that on through YouTube. YouTube as well. That yeah. was oh, just yeah. so much helpful. Uh, well, just just on that, guys. I mean, we it was important for us to, to finish off. I mean, I think we were the only cricket board in the world that announced a full domestic schedule during COVID. Mm -hmm. So we, we put the whole biosecure. Our medical team did an amazing job with our domestic team. You know, with hotels, we've had PSL, Guy the Elzum Trophy and international teams all in Pakistan at the same time. You know what right. it's like. It's chaos, right? Yeah, Most yeah, of the yeah, time absolutely. in Pakistan. It's not yeah. your nice structured system where everybody follows protocols. You, yeah. know, you, had, you know, so so our team did an amazing job to get the Zimbabwe series done and get the final four matches completed as well. So I think it's, you know, hats off to all, the, all our operational team that actually did the work on the ground because they did a phenomenal job. And we're finishing the Guy the Ozum Trophy matches off now. We're hoping within the next week to uh, South Africa are going to announce they're coming as well for the two tests, three T20s at the end of January. We'll get into PSL 6 and then we've got New Zealand coming for three ODIs, five T20s in October. Yeah. Then England come for two matches and then we go to the World Cup. But, but just to give you a quick idea, guys, literally 30 seconds of what our guys have got going on for the next 12 months. It's ridiculous. So um, they get back from New Zealand on the 12th of January. Mm -hmm. The 18th of January, they assemble for a camp in Karachi before the first test against South Africa. Um, they play that. Five days later, the PSL starts. Four days after the PSL finishes, they go to South Africa for three ODIs and three T20s. From there, they fly directly to Zimbabwe to play two tests and three ODIs. They come back for four weeks, three weeks, the Asia Cup, hopefully in the middle of June in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. From there, they fly directly to England for three ODIs, three T20s. From there, day after the last ODI, they fly to the West Indies for three test matches and three T20s. They, they fly directly to the UAE, where we play wow. Af Afghanistan in three ODIs in September. Come back five days later, we start the series against New Zealand, three ODIs, five T20s, play England, and then they go directly to the World Cup. So That's, that's amazing. That's that's a, that, I mean, in <clears throat> excuse me, but in 30 seconds, that's what you just explained. That's like a 30 month of you know, planning, uh, worth of planning, 30, yeah. 30 month of planning structure into 12 months. But one yeah. thing I just again, I, I pick on, I pick on words, yeah, 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 when you mentioned, yeah, please, right? yeah, yeah. And, it, and all these, in all these things that you just mentioned, right, New Zealand, England, Zimbabwe, Afghanistan, all I heard was five test matches altogether, yeah, two with Why Zimbabwe, we play more. Why aren't yeah. we doing the opposite? Yeah. Why aren't we making we're, like, you know, we're we're talking about the ashes? Yeah, and, yeah. Just to so, just to give you an, just to give you an idea, the Future Tours program that was done probably three, three four years ago. I don't know whoever was was doing it at the moment. Just for some reason, factored in two tests against most of the countries. Ridiculous. So ridiculous. we're actually starting our Future Tours program now for the 2023 to 2027 which I'll be involved with. So England, when they come next next year, will we'll play three test matches in Pakistan. Australia, when they come in February 22, are going to play three test matches. That's good. So that's, that's, that's already in place. So okay. England in 22 and Australia, there's going to be six test matches just in 2022. With so, top teams, um, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, you know, for us, we, who've been starved of test cricket, 
You yeah. know, we we want to try and get a three three test as a staple diet with all of our new feature tools program with every country. Minimum, yeah. Yeah. So. All right. I so mean, but jokes I being on the side, right? Just I mean, again, just just a, a statement I would make, right? A, a jokes being on the side. I mean, T20s and the ODIs. Yes, we watch it. We all wear the jerseys and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I. Being an old school cricket, you know, I I think test is a real test. And really old, cricketers, right? really old school. Really, really old. Really, old, right? yeah. really. Like really. <laughs> no, so, it's, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's for all of us. I mean, we're the purists, right? Yeah, the, the five day, Five days, you wake up in the morning and you're watching that first over being bowled. You know, you can't beat that. You sit, you sit you on can. the couch for five days, you can watch it. Yeah. You know, and God knows we're amazing. doing the, the, the couch bit these days yeah. extensively. Yeah. Um, but see, really, really appreciate your time. Uh, before you no leave, problem. just one quick, 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 really lighter, I would say, uh, on, yeah. on a lighter note. Um, before you became the CEO, I know, I'm sure, like, you were involved in cricket and you had met, you know, a lot of the big names, if you will. But has there been any any big names that you've met after you became the chairman? Because that kind of comes as a perk of the job that you get to meet these big players. Any any anyone that stands out, you're like, oh, this is one of my heroes, and because of this job, I met this person. Who would that be? Could be Pakistani, could be international. Any any names that p- pop up in your head? Zabi, you've just elevated me to chairman, by the way, which I'll. I'll <laughs> oh, accept. sorry. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Th- thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah. I apologize. That's on money. <laughs> no, um, I haven't. To be honest with you, you know, uh, a lot of that stuff is. It's quite a superficial stuff. I don't really pay much attention to it. Yeah. You know, England, you Ooh, know, yeah, I, I, I had, I, I was, you know, I selected as one of three people to have a private lunch with the Queen at Buckingham Palace. And there's only three people, you know, you kind of Blacks. do those things, but it's not, it's not real, right? It's kind of, you know, people are people. I don't look at superstars or film stars or the prime minister and think, crikey, you know, I'm, I'm in awe. It's just one of those things. You know, when you walk out in front of 20, 30,000 people at a Lord's final or something, which... I was lucky enough to when I was at Warwickshire in in '95, yeah. and we we did all that. You know, you kind of you kind of take it a little bit in your stride, and it's just well, I need to just keep focus on my job because that's what I get judged on. So I don't I don't get caught up I don't get caught up in all of that stuff if I'm honest. It's a very flexy answer right there. So weird flex, but that's good. That's good to know that yeah. you got all that all that in. Yeah. Um. And but by the way, the whole uh, uh promotion to chairman is part of the gig because you know. <laughs> if you're gonna appear on our podcast, that's that's what we do. We hand out these jobs as well. That's why yeah. we have Sahir also uh, working with you. Um, again, we see <laughs> so so much appreciated. This is this no is problem. Uh, we've ha- we had so many other things that we wanted to discuss with you. So yeah. we'll keep it uh, for, for another time. Uh, I know we want to be mindful of your time as well. Uh, just keep doing the great work that you're doing. Um, we'll be, you know, on the sides, really supporting you, backing you throughout this, because we know that you're the right person. Things as well. Mm. Uh, uh, guys, you want to add something to that as well? Um, all I'm going to say is, we seem up there, Gabrana nahi hai. <laughs> Just like Imran Khan says, right? I mean, you, it's not uh, easy to work in Pakistan. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll tell you a funny I'm, story very quickly, right? So yeah, we went yeah. when we looked, when we announced the deal with PTV, right? And um, you know, we, we had our COO who was a compare for, for the ceremony where Imran was attending at, at Prime Minister House. You know, classic two government agencies striking yeah. a deal for the good of, of cricket in Pakistan. Right. So he so the COO decided he was going to speak in English. So, you know, he, you know, <laughs> distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you know, welcome to this auspicious occasion, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> all of a sudden, is he's sitting there, Imran's sitting there with his tasbih like this. Right, right, right. And all of a sudden, he bellows out. Urdu me. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and you went, oh, oh so, 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 sorry, sorry, Prime Minister. Oh, wow. and, that, and that was, it was the funniest thing. Just, everybody just startled. He just sat there and went, Urdu me. <laughs> the guy just completely froze think, on the screen. Oh, wow. I think Imran saw, Imran Khan probably saw through that. He's not going to make it through the end of the sentence. So we got to help him out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he just thought, you know. That is hilarious. Are, are, are the, are the you, you have to cr- ready for the... You have to be cruel to be kind. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah, Again, but, Wasim, uh, really, really this was, a, this was a pleasure, no Wasim, talking with you. So. Pleasure, thank guys. Thank you for thank taking you. the time out. So no worries. Thank you. Huh? Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.